Welcome, everyone, to Season 2 of the Iona College Athletics Podcast. John Stanko being joined here by Jack Clark and Garrett Murray in our self-quarantined isolation. Guys, how are you doing? Doing great. Doing good. Glad to be here. This is, again, Season 2, Episode 1. Uh, we started this podcast last year, guys, with a huge help from Mike Phillips. So special thanks to Mike Phillips for, keep, for getting this off the ground, and he'll definitely be with us as the year goes forward helping us out. I'm sure he'll be doing some guest spot and guest hosting as well as our years get more busy. And, guys, we kind of have bigger plans for this this year. I think we could all touch on this. Uh, we're not only going to have the podcast, we're going to try and do it every week, but also you guys know we do these coaches' corners and stuff. We interview our student-athletes, and I think the plan is, right, we're going to – as long as those things are easily transferable to audio form, you're going to see more direct interviews with the coaches and student-athletes on this podcast feed. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome, obviously, to get the perspective from student-athletes and coaches. You know, that's stuff that a lot of people – that follow the teams and the alumni, fans, parents all want to, they don't want to hear so much from us. They want to hear from them and their perspective. Yeah, it's going to allow the fans to get closer to the, to the athletes and get to know them more. Yeah, we're not the important ones in this conversation. Uh, so, yeah, again, this podcast, it was on YouTube all of last year. Uh, we have now also backlogged and back cataloged all old podcasts and coaches corners from the past year um, onto Spotify as well and uh, distributed through Anchor. So again, if you want to listen to any Iona Athletics podcast going back to the start of last year, they're all now on Spotify. Just search Iona Athletics, Iona College Athletics podcast, and you'll be able to find it. All right, Jack, yeah, now let's go on to the show. Just some Iona Athletics news updates. First off, early last week. Uh, Jack, the Iona College Men's Swimming Programs uh, were named College Swimming and Diving Coaches Association of America, CSCAA, Scholar All-America Teams, something that the teams are very accustomed to being named. Yeah, 21 straight semesters for the women's team, and that dates back to the spring of 2010. Uh, the archives on the CSCAA website go back that far, and for the men, 18th semester in the past 21, dating back to that same time frame. So obviously really impressive stuff there for those two programs. And uh, Nick Cavataro, head coach, got a nice shout out from the CSCAA uh, executive director, just noting that no team was unaffected by the pandemic and uh, that everyone should be proud. Everyone at the college should be proud of the team and their efforts. Yeah, we want to give a special shout out also to Jamie Fogarty, uh, Rory Redmond, Sarah Pierce, the academics department at Iona Athletics for God knows the amount of work they had to do um, for the virtual learning and stuff like that, getting everyone situated. So a lot of effort on their part too, but another very, very good academic semester uh, for Iona College Athletics, especially the swimming and diving programs. Also, we could say Nick Cavatero, legend just in general. Oh, yeah. Uh, next biggest news, which most people saw, uh, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference Council of Presidents virtually met at the end of June, and they came to some uh, big points of approval. Most notably, what people saw is that they agreed that September 11th will be the common start date for all non-conference and conference sports for MAC fall sports. So that's September 11th is going to be kind of when the athletic calendar year starts for competition in the MAC. Um, and some other big points that are pointed out where there's a social responsibility pledge for COVID-19 that all MAC student athletes will be asked to sign uh, as a condition of participating in MAC championship uh, competition. So if it gets to MAC championships, they have to sign that waiver or that, not that waiver, that pledge, uh, specify it's a pledge. So they have to sign that in order to participate. Again, just good social responsibility. And then there was also a general a return to campus and athletic activity action plan that was approved by all the presidents, which includes the baseline policies and procedures for all campus athletic activities and competitions for the academic year. And I can speak behind the scenes that Director of Athletics Matt Kowalski is members of various committees and especially working with Sam DeRosa, uh, again, head of sports medicine at Iona College Athletics. And they've been working diligently to get those protocols in order. And we're going to be in good shape come when the student athletes get back to campus. Uh, in early August. And again, the MAC Council presence is gonna meet again on July 15th, where they're gonna analyze what has happened in the time since our last meeting uh, and review the resumption of fall sports efforts. So some big news there. Again, most people know it's September 11th, the common start date for all non-conference and conference contests 
for Mac Fall Sports. So those are two pieces of big news, but guys, kind of the biggest thing that we were involved with as the Iona College Athletics Communications staff uh, this past month is we kind of ran this social media campaign, a moment of the year of bracket challenge that included 2019, 2020, and also some spring 2019 as well, because we wanted to make sure that those uh, sports who didn't get to complete their full season, um, they made sure they were represented in this bracket challenge. So I guess, Garrett, I'll throw to you first. Uh, what was this like for you kind of trying to pick out these 16 moments that we eventually uh, fell upon as a staff? Uh, what was this process like for you kind of diving through the archives and, and talking it through with us? What was your mindset like? It, it was a fun, fun environment. Um, just going back and remembering all these moments that happened and where you were and how you reacted, it kind of was like a second time seeing it and it was fun. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I mean, when, when we went back to look at that stuff, we had to obviously narrow it down to 16 moments and then including the sp spring 2019 stuff that, you know, we had a pretty big list that we had to narrow down afterwards, but it was fun to, uh, like Garrett said, go back and sort of reminisce on those moments and where we were either being there or, you know, following along live outside of, the actual competition itself. Yeah, we kind of, well, we probably had a list of like 25, 30 off the bat, and then it was kind of whittling it down from there, uh, making sure we include all sports that we possibly could, because uh, there are a lot of great achievements across all the different sports. So for people who didn't follow along with the moment of the year bracket challenge, uh, there were 16 top moments and achievements that were chosen from, and then there was votes that took place uh, every day over Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram story in which we tallied up all those votes and took the percentage in the moment that won the highest percentage, obviously moved on to the next round. And I will say that the placement of each moment in the initial bracket uh, was completely random and it was literally drawn out of a hat because that's exactly what I did. So literally every single moment drawn out of a hat for their first round matchup. And we should mention now because it's over, the big winner was Brian Kelly uh, becoming the, winning, the winningest coach uh, for a single program in Iona College Athletics history. Um, I mean, remarkable thing sat on, uh, he now has 379 wins. That was the record that he set with women's water polo. He got that achievement back on uh, Saturday, February 22nd, when the team swept, um, Bill Nova and St. Francis Brooklyn in Poughkeepsie, New York. So that was the winning moment. And Garrett, I think it's safe to say we were shocked at the amount. No, well, not necessarily shocked. We were impressed with the turnout and the rallying cry for BK, especially over the semifinals and finals in terms of people getting out to vote for him. Oh, it was incredible. His alumni base just took it by storm and no one could catch him. No, nobody could catch him. Again, we had in the final vote, the final vote was BK's uh, winning record versus uh, the women's soccer team kind of turnaround season really kind of, it changed, changes the outlook for the program. And it, can't, and it happened on that last regular season win against Ryder, which Jack secured one of their best seasons this entire decade. Yeah, it was, it was an incredible turnaround season for them and, and a changing of the culture under first-year head coach Todd Plourd. And obviously another thing that you said almost shocked and impressed of the turnout of the women's soccer fans carrying them to the championship uh, in the bracket. They uh, – it was the epitome of their season inside that bracket as well. They were down in the first 12 hours of the vote. And the way everything was trending was, you know, it was whoever was up halfway through that bracket usually advanced. But Todd was able to rally his troops and along with his team, able to uh, garner a lot of votes for them in those, that second half of the voting and push them all the way to the championship. All right, so when we were making this bracket, when we picked out these 16, these 16 moments, did either of you guys have a moment that you thought would, would kind of be the front runner? Uh, it might have been BK Wing at all. Um, I know he was probably in the top three because I knew his fan base would come out. But was there a moment that you thought was kind of a sneaky one that you thought would, that you thought would get the win? I don't know if I thought there was a sneaky one, but I thought because cross country and track and field was so well represented in the bracket, I thought – that was a fair, you know, that was my, my guess was that one of those moments would come out on top just because, you know, you look at the size of that alumni fan base and just look at all the success they've had. I mean, 
that was my guess initially. Initially, I, I'm with you where I thought, you know, BK would make a good run at it because, like you said, of, of the support that he has. But my guess was cross country or track and field. To be honest, when we started this, I thought it was going to be a easy win for men's soccer in their MAC championship from this past fall. But anything can happen. Hey, it was up to the fans. The fans voted. This is all a fan vote. Uh, yeah, mentioning the, the cross country track and field program, they had three moments on this because, to be fair, they had a remarkable, remarkable season. Uh, again, sweeping the MAC championships. Um, they had two All-Americans at the NCAA uh, Cross Country Championship in Egle Mornente and John Millar. And then also at the MAC Indoor Track and Field Championship, uh, they swept the major awards there as well. Again, Egle taking the top prize and then a great story with Jack Hopkins. So, but also, can we just mention the, the Cross Country streak sweeping it again? Um, men's Cross Country winning its 29th straight, which dates back to 1991, and women's Cross Country 14 out of 15, I believe, too. So, I mean, that's it's just... It's bonkers. It's it's absolutely insane. It's clockwork. It's like clockwork. It's just you can't you can't believe it until you see it. Yeah. It's one of those things that And we should say that in our research for this, there was a great moment uh that we found out women's rowing too, uh back in their spring season last year, that their lightweight four, they reached the Dadvale uh, regatta finals for the first time since nineteen ninety two. So getting an achievement that hadn't happened in, what, 28 years, and to have that moment last year, uh, very big for their rowing program as well. So that one, when we did the research and we found that one, that one really did stick out. Uh, but let's talk about some of these moments because we all were there for some of these moments. We all were there experiencing. We had our own little memories with it. And let's start with the Mac, uh, men's soccer championship. I know that both uh, Jack and I were there at the game. And, Jack, this is your main sport that you cover. So – Talk about what this day was like for you. You followed them through the championship run. We're all at the championship game, freezing our butts off uh, at St. Peter's at home field. So what was the moment like for you when they won that championship? And you got to travel to NCAAs too. Yeah, the moment for them actually when the game itself ended and they were champions was incredible because, you know, for what we have to do, you know, we have to put us being a fan and supporting the team in the back seat a little. You know, but right there, that moment, you just wanted to capture everything. So we had our phones and our, our students that were helping out with the cameras and everybody just rushing the field. I mean, I have a video still on my phone of me full sprinting out to the field, camera shaking, trying to get all the fans from the opposite sideline, meeting the players, you know, in that back. I can still see it in that back left corner of the field. And I have a video of you. <laughs> you can see yourself in the video, just your full sprint with the camera up above your head trying to capture everything. I mean, that, that itself was incredible and something that I was never really a part of, which was awesome. And, but then the other part of it is I had to put that to the back seat, you know, the urge to celebrate and high five everybody, but because I had to grab players and coach to go now to the, back to the other sideline, stop celebration, talk to the ESPN, you know, get everyone settled and, and in place for the, ceremony itself to get the shirts and the trophy I mean it, it was I mean it was wild but it was so much fun yeah I think we ought to give there were a lot of students there helping that day I think there was there was both of us uh there was then uh Anthony Sorbaleri Aaron Convey came down Farrell Shine came down Mike Phillips came down Mary Conroy came down Mary Conroy got unbelievable video of so many goals she's a monster on the Instagram story so Again, team effort to really capture every single angle of that come behind championship win. Mary, uh, just huge, huge shout out for Mary. Just let's just put it out let's, there. I let's mean, just get the, out there, Mary. The, the stuff Instagram that she story. does, Instagram story, soccer, yeah. basketball, lacrosse, everything. Just such a good job. I don't know how she does it. Um, yeah, I want I want to ask you about one moment. The men's basketball, probably the most exciting game of the year, was Isaiah Rossi in the game winning three against Ryder. And for those who don't know, Garrett's uh, GA in the communications department took over the helm in the ESPN truck. No formal training in it, but he ex started uh, really excelling uh, as the year went on. And this must have been an absolutely bonkers moment for you. It's your first game-winning basket doing live productions uh, in the truck. So what was this like for you? Uh, I mean, we're, me and Jack are in the gym. We know it like from that perspective, but you're trying to get every camera angle. You're trying to talk to the announcers. What's this entire process like for you backstage? It's, it's hectic, but it's a good hectic. So it's 
get in the camera to get the right shot. You're yelling at them. You're yelling at the announcers trying to get in the year, but they're yelling because he just hit a game winner, and it's just so hectic. I saw it coming, to be honest. You can ask Aiden Callan, who sits in the truck with me. I was like, he's going to hit this shot. Don't count him out. And it's just I got to give credit to the camera crew. We did a pretty good job with it. My main goal was just make sure we have the clock in, you know? Yeah, that's so right. That's my number one goal. And it was just – it was a good hectic. It was, it was fun, though, man. Yeah, I mean, absolutely bonkers, crazy thing. One of the biggest celebrations the Heinz Center saw this year. And I think, Jack, one more we can kind of talk about is you were also part of two big celebrations in a couple moments for you. Let's go back to the spring of 2019 first. The walk-off in the Max Softball Championship, a walk-off Grand Slam. And I, if you remember this correctly, you were literally like, you're like, I should grab a camera for this. And literally, as you grab the camera, the unthinkable happened. Yeah, I was, you know, I was at Marist, and I was sitting behind. They had a table set up for us where they were running stats and, and all that. So, you know, I was sitting back there, essentially writing the release uh, or the game recap as everything was unfolding. And in the beginning of the game, assisting with stats, making sure that stuff was, you know, correct. They had the right numbers and stuff happening out there. And you're right. I just – I had the camera with me, and I had been taking pictures pregame and, and kind of just would take a couple pictures from back there, but they weren't the greatest angle. So, obviously, now as this is all unfolding, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like, all right, we – I didn't think walk-off Grand Slam. I just think, okay, walk-off. You know, we'll, we're going to start a rally. We're starting the rally. We're going to finish it. I should capture this. So, I got to the – uh first base side which was opposite our dugout and I could just sneak the camera right through the chain link fence and I mean it was I guess luck but I don't consider myself a great photographer but those shots I were awesome I mean you could see the pitch coming in Haley making contact and see straight down the third base line to coach Katie Jansen literally jumping off of her feet two hands raised in the air celebrating and then of course uh, that started circulating with the uh, the video itself of Haley rounding the bases it was that was an awesome moment to be a part of yeah and you you literally got the exact swing and the exact pitch uh, as that walk off grand slam absolutely bonkers and then this past spring uh, huge shout out to to Coach Khan Coach Khan got her first win uh, as Iona College Women's Cross Head Coach in her first year at home against UNH and you were down there on the field I think me and Garrett had a basketball game that day so we we're inside working that and you were there and you got some great footage from the sideline and kind of the emotion that that win had for Coach Khan and the women's lacrosse program. Yeah, I was actually also in the gym too because we were somewhat short-staffed that day with two games going on. So we had a, uh, a skeleton crew outside. So we had kind of, you know, uh, walkie-talkie communication with them, making sure everything was running smoothly. And uh, after, you know, the first half, we, uh, everything was settled out there. So I had been going from upstairs working the scoreboard for the basketball game. We played Maris that day. I would just go from upstairs through the gym out to the hallway or down to the field just to keep checking the score. And I keep going and checking the score, and we're winning. Time's running down, and we're winning. I'm like, all right. Obviously, we knew this would be, if it played out, the first win for Coach Khan. So I ran back up to the office, fumbling through eight different cameras and batteries, making sure stuff is charged and make sure I have an SD card in it and go, you know, Full suit, dressed, dressed in the full suit, running outside all the way downstairs. And uh, that, that gate. Rest in got, peace to the suit. <laughs> Rest in yeah, peace I, that suit. gate, it only opens one way. And I was in such a rush because it was the final minute. And I was, uh, that caught my suit on the right side and ripped it. But suppose that's the price you got to pay for uh, getting that shot. That, that was an awesome shot to get too, just because, you could see the emotion from Lauren and her staff. And then again, everyone rushing the field and get the emotion of the whole entire team out there celebrating the win. And then through the handshake lines, you know, settling down right there on the handshake lines, but then again, losing it right after they got through and, and you know, screaming in the face of the camera and then everyone huddling up after a nice pep talk from Lauren. That game was a thriller too. That was a, that was a good game. Yeah, I mean, great moments. And again, that was that was part of the fun of working the social media campaign this moment of the year, Brackus. It's like, like Garrett said, you get to relive the moments and like you're going to remember them forever. But to have that just that trigger be like, oh, yeah, that's what this was like. Like for me, the the, the cross country 
the national championships in, in Indiana was just bonkers. Cause I was, I flew out there. I was there for less than 24 hours. I got there in the rain, the race is in the rain. Um, and you're just, you're following along as, as the teams and Egla are, are racing on this muddy, disgusting track, but it was remarkable to, to see Iona do well. The men's team placed 12th, uh, in the championship. They exceeded expectations to all Americans. Um, I remember too, uh, former Iona athletics director, Rick Cole was there for Hofstra. So getting to catch up with him as well, uh, with his student athletes representing there. So that was a great moment for me. And I mean, a less than 24 hour trip, literally fly there, do the race and you're flying back later the next afternoon, late morning. And to, to see the team succeed in that way was absolutely remarkable. So again, to have those little trigger points now where you can go back and reflect on those moments is really special. But we have another kind of social media campaign coming up, guys, that we're working on now, which is going to be starting uh, in the second week of July, right after July 4th. And this one for us is kind of reviewing, we're doing an, an all-decade team, another fan participation kind of social media campaign. Um, we're going to be taking the past 10 years of Iona College Athletics for each sport with input from the coaches as well, uh, highlighting some of the student athletes who participated for each team. And then fans are going to be directed to a web page where they can vote for their, whether it be for basketball starting five, for volleyball starting seven. And at the end of each week, each Friday, we're going to put out a graphic and an article kind of highlighting who the fans thought were part of their all-decade team. And guys, I'm really excited to see what the fans think. We obviously know from our perspective when we were students at Iona and now working at Iona. And for Garrett, you may have been teammates for like the baseball program. You're going to have literally, you were in the dugout with these guys too. So you're going to have really good perspective. Now I'm excited to see what the fans' perspective is going to be uh, and the way they vote for this all-decade team. Yeah, I'm excited to see. I, I think it's a perfect transition, obviously. I don't even the, – the, the support we got from the fans on social media for the moment of the year was – I didn't expect to get that much interaction. So I think it's now a perfect transition into this. So I'm hoping that we can get the same amount of interaction now just on the site – that we were getting on social media for the moment of the year. Because obviously, like you said, this is decided entirely by the fans' vote. So I'm excited to see how this plays out. And Garrett, I'm sorry we didn't include you on. I don't think you're an a immediate selection on the baseball uh, all-decade team, but you know what? It's okay. Uh, it's all right. You're, you're the captain of morale, and the team will remember you forever for that. There's going to be a lot, There's... a lot of burner accounts, burner emails, submitting <laughs> five write-in votes for Garrett Murray. Don't be surprised when I end up being a DH on the <laughs> all decade team. Yeah, so that's, that's going to start, I believe that's starting Monday, July 6th. We're starting with basketball and we're going to kind of work our way through and the way we kind of planning it out, as this is really good as a fire truck's going behind me, this is working from home. Uh, we're starting July 6th and then we are going through uh, to the start of fall and we're ending with the fall sports. I believe soccer is going to be our last one. So we're kind of teasing it out to that September 11th moment when non-conference, the athletic calendar year starts in that way. And we should also uh, talk about the MAC is running their own 40 year celebration. And we all met as a communication staff with Brian Byer earlier this week. And they're doing, uh, they're asking each school to pick out five student athletes for each sport. And the Mavs can be highlighting each sport, each team, those five student athletes as part of their 40 year celebration. And that's going to be starting soon as well. And so be, be sure to stay tuned to kind of Max Sports social media, MaxSports.com, as well as ICDLs.com, where we'll be highlighting those five student athletes from each sport that have competed not only in the past decade, like our social media campaign is going to be, but also over the past 40 years. So you're going to get people getting back from the 80s and stuff like that. And I think we could all say having the resources of, say, a Nick Cavatero for swimming to dive back into the record books or for BK for a women's water polo where you literally just ask, like, hey, BK, you literally have been coaching this team since its inception. Who do you think the five should be? What do, what's your input? So it's very good to have those resources here. And I'm excited to see what the other schools do as well because obviously we have a relative history about each school, but what each coach from each school kind of puts on their five, what their input's going to be, I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. Uh, I, I think other schools will be surprised by our selections too. It's all about how coaches feel and what really happened. Yeah, it's also kind of like, it's like the unsung kind of things too. Like you might have a student athlete who doesn't have the best stats, but you look back on their four years and you think going, wow, they started nearly every single game. And maybe it's a defenseman for soccer who doesn't have a ton of stats, but you realize going, holy crap, she was an absolute monster. And they, they deserve to be on that five. Just a staple in 
on the team. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, before though, the last segment before we sign off here is we want to give a nice little Gale spotlight. And I think the, the Gale spotlight shines most brightly on the Iona College women's soccer program, not only for finishing second in the moment of the year tournament, which is a very good uh, representation of their fans and a good achievement in itself, but also the women's soccer program uh, volunteered time at a local New Rochelle stop and shop uh, to get support for the Hope Food Pantry and local New Rochelle community. Uh, so, Garrett, I know you work exclusively with women's soccer. You've talked to head coach Ford. Uh, so, can I just kind of talk about how this came about with him and, uh, and, and what he said about it in, in working this afternoon at local stop and shop? I got you, Garrett. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Todd, Todd and the team organized this, like you said, and obviously it's, it's a very nice gesture and a selfless act to, during these times now, go out and – help the local community surrounding the school. Um, Todd was able to organize this with the help of some of the brothers on campus. And obviously, like you said, the Hope Food Pantry and Stop and Shop to donate non-perishable food items, collect and donate non-perishable food items to the local community. Um, two of the girls on the soccer team, Angelina DeChico and Gab Kikuchi, are part of the SAC eBoard. And uh, Angelina spoke with P. Ruff of News 12, and they were featured on a new segment, just covering it and, and giving it a little bit of exposure. But um, speaking with Todd, obviously, you know, he was very happy with the, the turnout that they got of people supporting them there. And obviously from the girls on his team, they were able to fill up an entire van uh, of items and bring it down and then collect more while they were down there. And um, speaking with some of the girls, they were very appreciative of the people that supported them. As I said, everyone was uh, very, very nice to them. And obviously a lot of people went in, they were at the entrance and the exit, people were going in, speaking with the girls at the entrance and coming out and donating items at the exit. So very nice gesture by the women's soccer program. And Gary, do you know how big those, those, those vans are? As former baseball student athlete, you run those vans all the time to City Park. And this women's soccer team, literally, I kid you not, they stuffed it so much where Coach Port had to, driving it, had to like clear space off the top just so we could see, see out the back rear view window. So it was literally filled so, so high. That's like uh, us stuffing ourselves in for a baseball trip. Fit as many as you can. Exactly. So you we mean, have to take less vans. Yeah, you'll lay across it, each other. It gets other's tight path. in there. Oh, yeah, There's so a lot we, more space than you think. That's true. That's true. You can get really, really creative with the space in there. Um, so yeah, special shout out to Iona Women's Soccer. Uh, again, all the Iona College Athletics teams participate in community service and they donate hundreds of hours to it each year. But women's soccer on the ball this past uh, local, this past weekend at local New Rochelle Stop and Shop and really kind of show what Gale Nation was all about. And I can tell you that the Stop and Shop was incredibly appreciative as well uh, for kind of raising awareness uh, for their local Stop and Shop. And it was got great interaction while being there. Um, so yeah, that is the, that's the end of season two, episode one of the Iona College Athletics podcast. Um, stay tuned for more of these coming up. Jack and Garrett, I want to thank you guys for joining me. Um, be sure to follow Iona College Athletics on all social media at IC Gales, as well as all the sports affiliated uh, specific social media accounts. And be sure to follow all the latest news on icgales.com. And I think the biggest thing we say uh, for everyone in Gale Nation, guys, we could all agree on this, is uh, definitely everyone be safe and thanks for listening. And any feedback on the Iowa College Athletics podcast or any support for Gale Nation is much appreciated. So I think we could all say stay safe, Gale Nation. We'll be hearing from you soon. Stay safe and hope to see you soon. Go Gales.